Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to finish mocking up the dry sump billet oiling system on my 400 cubic inch LS and figure out where we can run my turbo drains into. This is the billet daily engineering dry sump system that I'm going to install on this engine. It has a full oil pan and what I really like about it is the oil pump bolts directly to the oil pan. And so a full scavenge system is built into this section of the pan. And you can kind of get a better idea of how that works on the bottom. So this way there are zero scavenge lines running outside of the engine. It's all built in to this pump. So let's get this pan installed on the engine. Then we'll throw the water pump on, the alternator on, and then we can figure out if we can run these turbo drain lines into the front of this Jessel belt drive timing cover. Okay, there's the front of the engine. I got that spacer from ATI that's supposed to match this Jessel kit, but looking at the alignment, I still think, it's hard to tell in camera, but it still could come forward maybe 20 to 50 thou. It's really, really close though as it is. Oh, actually, yeah, the belt's not even fully on it, so it is back, it does need to come forward still. So I might have to look into getting a custom spacer made or maybe I can find like a real, you know, a second piece of shim stock I could put behind it. Um, but now we can finally look at somewhere and somehow to run turbo drains through that mess if I want to peg it onto the timing cover. So this is Rick from RPG Auto. He is the one who's actually going to be helping me do the full turbo kit on the Corvette to fit this engine into my 99 FRC. So the turbo headers I'm running are the speed uh, stainless header like tube style, like log style. Yep. And then they have the little 90 degree T4 ups. So the turbos will be somewhere in this neighborhood. Roughly a few inches higher than the valve cover? Yeah, about a few inches higher than the valve covers, but also probably, you know, eight to 10 inches in front, like the drain port in front of the valve cover. So okay. the problem with the valve covers is I don't think we'd have a good line of shot for a gravity drain. Which is better. I don't, I'm not a big fan of scavenge pumps. Um, I'd rather have a nice smooth gravity drain. Uh, right. Me too. So the original theory was in the timing cover down here, and actually you welded my old timing cover right. when I was originally going to turbo a stock block build. What's this, the clearance on the rear of the timing? Belt ooh, off? that's a good idea. Let's look at that. And <laughs> we can. Fans <laughs> on there. Um, I can tell you there's nothing behind it. Okay, it but goes, there's at least, you know, half inch maybe? No, it's tighter than that. Okay. It's, um, we just want to make sure there's no restrictions. Obviously, there's not a, I don't know what turbos you're running or how much oil pressure they need, um, but normally it's not an abundance of oil going through them. So as long as we have enough space to where there's no restriction because of the back of the block. Or right. The block. No, there won't be. Okay. I'll make sure there's a gap. Let me roll it back over. Yep. Okay. So... This side is easy because turbo's gonna be about here. I can then run my turbo drain straight through this massive opening cavity and shoot the timing cover right there. Which could be drilled and tapped. I'm, that billet's pretty thick. Yeah, so the theory was we can drill it, machine it, and then I've got some weld-in bungs on the counter over there that would then weld into that timing cover. Okay, I mean, that's an option where we could go with the ORB if it's machine oh. and threaded and we could yeah. actually tap it exactly because it's, it's thick enough billet you can see that we have plenty of material there that is i did not think of an orb 
And so we could probably do the same thing on this side, being that. So we got header, our manifold comes up, turbo, yay, in this area? Probably in this area. Okay, so if we, I'm sure there's, we could run down behind your KTEC tensioner, come down and do like a tight 90. Okay. Um, do like a tight 90 with the RB on one side. And we may be able to fit here. I guess the real question is once the turbos are mocked up on there and we have the drains ran, we could kind of play around and see. But being that that's billet and so thick, I think tapping it, doing an ORB would probably be our best bet. So should we go ahead and mock up turbos? I would. Before? Once we get the heads on, mock okay. up before it's in the vehicle. Okay. It's a lot easier to work around it, obviously. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But you're saying instead of stopping here, we should put heads on turbos and continue the mock up phase to figure out where we want to run Correct. drains. Yeah, okay. Because it's not hard to pull off the accessories in the front. So once we get everything mocked up and we go, this is a perfect route to run these lines and drains, and we know that gravity is going to work in our benefit. Okay. Then we'll do it that way. Cool. Well, then we'll pause here. I'll wait until the heads are probably final installed then. Or I guess we could go ahead. I mean, it doesn't make a difference to me. I could mock them up now, and then. Yeah, we could put headers. I have headers and turbos. Here? Not here. They're, up my, they're on the car. Okay. So, um, I mean, do you want to plan later? We're for you to week? come back? Yeah. yeah. We'll come back and revisit it. We'll see what we got going on. Um, okay. Well, we'll pick you guys up right now. And we're back. Boom. That is the future of how the motor is going to look once it is complete with everything mocked up for real. Well, everything is mocked up for real now, but it's just mocked up, everything's loose. So we got the heads on, intake manifold, twin turbo setup. These are T4 turbos, they are 6972 smetting units, uh, full billet, really nice pieces. These are gonna be good for probably about 16 to 1700 horsepower. And then once we need to go further, I'll step up to a large frame set of twin T6 turbos. But for now, we're gonna run these. So Rick is back, thanks for coming back. Definitely, definitely. He set me up with the TriStar Racing Products, guys. They make some really nice fabricating or fabrication components. So I ordered a couple AN10 drain fittings. And with everything mocked up now, I think the current plan is from this turbo, we can run straight out of the drain. And there's enough of a slope that I can go straight into one of the valve cover spacers that I'm gonna end up running. I think I'm gonna run a one inch ICT billet spacer followed by my motion billet valve cover. So into that spacer, we can run that turbo drain line. And then on this side, I can't go to the valve cover here because the drain would have to go around the actual header part I mean, of the exhaust. It's possible that we could use some type of heat wrap or heat management and run it this way. If, if you want to keep them symmetrical, symmetry is beauty, but yeah, I mean, we also got other ideas that could possibly work great to you. Yeah, I think for the sake of turbo drains, I'd rather it be like, I'm okay sacrificing yeah. a little bit of symmetry and beauty on for turbo drains. gravity to work with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely makes sense. So on this side, we have a perfect straight shot out of this drain, straight into the timing cover. Now we might have to weld some sort of an extension on to hold it out a little bit. I don't think that fitting will be welded straight into the turbo, under the timing cover. Yeah, we could figure out something with that. Just maybe uh, like a one inch spacer to space it out a little bit. Yeah, and, and then, then we could also snake do like around. A, a nice little P-clamp right here to hold it steady so it's not flopping around. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of options. That's the cool part about aftermarket. You could do whatever you want, make whatever you want fit wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, really trick. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to worry about this side for now because we got to wait till valve train's on and then we can mock up valve cover, spacer, then right. weld it. For this side though, I will go ahead and pop off that belt drive timing cover, get it all stripped down, put a hole in it where I want it, and then um, bring it to you. Sounds so you can great. weld it we'll and it we'll have one turbo drain done. I have an idea. Just looking at this right now. I, mean, yeah. I hate to you know, no. brainstorm out. I'm all ears. But I mean, the valley cover, we could also run two drains straight to the middle to the valley cover. Oh, I didn't even think of that. And so now that I see it and with the intake manifold on there, there's so Oh, much I didn't space, even think about that. Yeah. That'd be kind of golden. It'd be easy. Um, we might not have to utilize those 90s you just ordered. We could probably do a straight with 245 fittings. That way it's nice and linear going in there smooth. Yeah. And like there's miles of room right here. And it's and actually it's lower even lower than the valve, than the valve cover. Yeah. And I can run it straight from this side. Yep. And then so, so we'll keep symmetry still. I'm, I'm a big symmetry guy. I like things to match up. 
does this clocking, how much room do you know, or is that a better question for smetting diesel and how much uh, I can rotate that? So I was always told that vertical is always best, obviously. Right. Um, I'm sure you could do a slight cock to it. I wouldn't go too crazy because obviously it messes with gravity. Maybe no more than 15 yeah. or 20 degrees. Yeah, and we, we could play with it and see. Obviously when you start it up and the exhaust is on there and everything, we'll see what kind of oil it's consuming, if any. Hopefully none, but if anything's blowing by. Because I think the only reason up. I'm thinking of that is just getting it around this right. T4 flange. Which, if you talk but to I guess that'd diesel, be just fine. Yeah, that looks about good. It's still... And this little rubber line I'm just using because I had it laying around the shop. When we do it for real, we'll do actual nice lines. Oh, yeah. I tons of room. Yeah, and I bet you once it's tightened down, you could probably go vertical. Let me, uh, let me screw that on really quick, and then we can actually kind of form it and kind of bend it. Okay. This is why you bring your fabricator friends to help <laughs> you plan your engine because Rick saw something I didn't even think about. Because the turbos are so high and the, val the valley plate is so low, we have a nice gravity line straight to the valley plate. So there's a lot of clearance right here. So that won't melt or get burnt from contacting it. The drain will be straight vertical, so it's super efficient. And we'll have enough gravity line to go straight back into the valley plate. And are these ball bearing turbos? They are journal bearing. Journal, journal. okay. And do you know about roughly how much oil they want going to it? Have they told you anything yet? Yeah, so he wants me to run twin I think dash six is unrestricted. Either dash oh, six wow. or dash, no, I think it was dash fours. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Dash four is unrestricted. Yeah, because these are dash four. Yeah. And I already Loctited the hell out of these in there. Sweet. Yeah, dash so they're four permanent. unrestricted. I think we'll be good though with the drain uh, being dash four going in, dash 10 going back into the valley to drain back into the engine. We'll have plenty of space where it's not backing up. Yeah, I really like that idea. And forward acceleration. I mean, exactly. there's yeah. gonna be some G-force pulling that Oil. Well, I mean, with the amount of power you're about to put down with this thing, I'm sure there'll be plenty of G's. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. I think that's going to wrap up this video. Well, I guess I can now final install the belt drive in the oil pan because we're not running drains down there. Yeah. And then we'll just wait until the heads and everything. I mean, at this point, we could wait until it's in the car and until it comes to you right. to get cold side piping and hot side piping yep. out of the motor. Which out I of appreciate turbos. it being race car because it's so short and easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm going to run, actually, if you want to grab that throttle body, I'm going to run that on the manifold and then have you weld this on to that. And I'll run these motion quick clamps. Sweet. I'm a big fan. I've used them. One there, and then I've got their little two and a half inch guys to go on turbos. Sweet. And we'll have a single Y pipe. And then for the hot side, I'm thinking just, you know, unicorn style, just straight back with a little, yeah. with a you little. Know about how far back you want to go, or I guess when we get so, it So, yeah, well, I'm thinking when we get it mocked up, we'll be able to tell. I'm going to run twin O2 sensors on each bank. Yeah, so we want at least, was it, 24 inches from? Uh, 12 would be fine. 12, okay. 12 fine. would be fine. Uh, but, yeah, at least 12 I would like. Yeah. So I'm going to run the O2 basically right behind the turbine housing. Okay. I actually saw a picture. So I've always been concerned about where do you put O2s in a high horsepower, like, twin turbo build. Because a lot of people say you don't really want to put it in the pressure side of your hot housing. Right. Of your hot side. Because the extra pressure and back pressure can throw off your readings. Um, and I saw some people say you don't want to get it too close to this turbine housing, but again, because of the heat. Yeah. But then I saw a picture of a Porsche 24-hour uh, Le Mans, yeah. like, prototype car. And I'm not kidding. The O2 sensor couldn't have been more than an inch so I've on a 24-hour race car. I've been, ran into issues with them being too close. But, I mean, that's a 24-hour race car. If it works for them, it'll probably work for you. But so. I normally go, you know, 10 inches away. Okay. So. so if we put them, yay, away That'd from That'd be it, totally fine. And you kick up right here, and we'll do some kind of cool-looking tip. I think Sweet. Sweet. Well, yeah, I think that's later. Once I get the motor in the car, yeah. bring it to your shop. I just like to brainstorm early. That way, when we get the car, we already kind of have a game plan. And, you know, if we see something better, we talk, communicate, and figure out from there. Yep. Well, there she is, man. I like it. Cool. All right. See y'all later.